Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to Network Special, the podcast that dives into the old, bygone world of appointment television. And we are watching programs that were only meant to be seen once, but thanks to the magic of the internet, we can watch them again and again, the way the creators didn't intend. My name is Zachariah. And I'm Nathan. Now, you may be saying to yourselves, wow. They sound really good this week. Did I get new headphones? No. No, man. We're now legit. We are in the luxurious Golden Ox studio, and we are part of the Golden Ox podcast network, and we have an honest-to-God producer making us sound Mm -hmm. professional, and it's uh, producer Jeremy. Producer Jeremy, please say hello. I can't yeah. hear you in my headphones. I could just hear you screaming from the other room, but I assume it sounds very professional. <laughs> That's all the, I just yeah. Yeah. Turn it on to record. <laughs> no, 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 no. Jeremy, I would love to occasionally throw to you. All right. I'm. I, hello, everybody. We can we can edit that and post. <laughs> <laughs> And where where, on, where is me, Golden Ox? In the beautiful uh, oh. Tremont, Ohio, of Cleveland. Does that made I don't think that made nice. any sense, did it? No, it's in the beautiful Golden Tremont of Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're happy to be here, uh, Nathan. You doing okay? You're on vacation yes. right now. I'm seeing your vacation yeah. home right now. Yeah, I'm on a Mother's Day getaway in Venice, Florida. What is there to do in Venice, yeah. should I ask? There's a giant pair of silverware behind you. That's all I know about it. Yes, we eat giant salads all day. <laughs> um, no, it's a uh, yeah, beach town. Yeah, Venice Beach. It's uh, I mean, uh, if there's anything to do in Florida, it's either a theme park or a beach. So this right. is, we're at beach time right now. Right. Yeah, if you're looking to go yeah. on a vacation, you could call it a real Shangri-La. Huh? Oh, right. That is a great God. intro to what we are talking about this week. That's called a transition, everyone. And mm-hmm. I did a great job mm-hmm. at it because today we are mm-hmm. talking about. In Shangri La Plaza, everyone had something to sing about, whether it was the trials and tribulations of finding the perfect mate or making the perfect donut. We're not too deep into our episode numbers, but would you say that this is maybe the strangest show we've watched in terms of why did um, they think this would work? <laughs> what was it supposed I, to be I'm doing? going to say this is the worst show that we've watched. Wow. And we've watched the some worst? bad ones. You think this is yes. the worst? <laughs> yes. I was, uh, I was just in pain the whole time. Well, today we are talking about a, a show called Shangri-La Plaza, which is a musical comedy pilot made for CBS television in 1990. And uh, even though it's a pilot, it fits in to our our podcast uh, demands because this was, at the time, the most expensive single episode of television CBS had made at the time. Uh, And even though this pilot wasn't picked up, they said, oh, no, we are airing this at least once. So it was played once as a CBS special. Um, I did not see this when it first aired. I had learned about this maybe eight years ago when some kind soul posted it on YouTube and I found it going down a rabbit hole. And recently it's garnered a tiny bit more attention. It just had a, a article written about it in the LA Times. It's uh, the reason why this, wor- uh, he said why it worked, that it's a pilot that actually aired, but that was a common thing for, TV stations to do uh, since they paid money for these pilots with the hopes that they'd be picked up for a show, but then they, they just don't want to just throw it away. So a lot of times they would air them as special presentations and they, they were kind of like these, you know, weekend movies, but really they were like 30 minute pilots for shows. And we'll talk about tons of these on this. Uh, There's some actual really super good ones. I, I am saying this was not one of them. I guess whenever um, I'm surprised to say that this was the worst, not because I think it's 
<laughs> legitimately good, good. But I would rather rewatch this than rewatch the MC Hammer movie or rewatch Bad Ronald. Maybe because it's a half hour as opposed to, maybe if this was a two hour movie, I'd be saying something different. Oh my God. If this was a two hour movie, I would have hung myself. <laughs> It, 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 it's, I just, I mean, I, the, to be fair to it, I am not a fan of musicals. Um, so right, this is a musical and right out of the gate, I was losing my mind. Well, you say it's a musical boy. Is it, they never <laughs> stop singing except for a couple lines. And it's kind of what makes the tone of the show so odd. It's also like as some table setting for right now, this is when, there was a weird obsession with making TV series that were also musicals because there was cop rock. Stephen Bochco made a cop show where the cops sang rock and roll and the drug dealers sang raps. <laughs> and you're not going <laughs> to yeah, believe this. Which is true. That's just what happens. <laughs> That's the kind of music each people like. Uh, and I guess, was Fame a musical show? Was there original songs that people were singing on the Fame TV show? I can't say I've ever seen uh, it. Uh, maybe, but I, I I don't think they were. It wasn't a musical, you okay, know, in this sense, like where they were singing while they were just washing dishes, right? Um, and and the reason why I think it's going to be destined to fail is if you're writing new songs every single week, even if you have a stable of songwriters, how are you expected to keep this up? The only reason why something like Glee works is because it's a jukebox show. It's songs you already know people already uh, love these songs it's not a, 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 a upwards climb to to make people engage with them yeah the, the the songs in this were i mean they weren't even songs i think there was maybe one or two actual things you could kind of put on itunes you know if, if I, that were around at the time i think there but are, the rest of it was just like go on oh, i think there are two songs in this whole half hour yes and the rest is just them being like, oh, I don't know, I, I, this this car doesn't work. Oh, I think it does. <laughs> like it was just like they weren't songs; they were just singing a line in a note. So this it was, it was <laughs> yeah. That th that's kind of thing is that it, when I say that there are two songs, it's not that people aren't singing all the time, but it's like if I was talking to you like this, Nathan, and everything I said was in this sort of cadence. <laughs> That counts as a song because there's a keyboard going behind them and everyone is kind of up and downing it. Like it's talk singing. It's what you give the kid who can't sing in the high school musical. <laughs> it's what I got. It, it's, it's, it's miserable. It's uh, it, the, the reason why it's so bad is because um, the, the two songs that they did have, like they were fine. Like yeah. th those were okay, but there was no um, way to kind of enjoy what was being sung in the other parts because there wasn't anything to like catch on to. Like there was no harmony or, you know, melody, like there was no melody or anything that you could like follow along with where I feel like in a good musical, when that's, when those things are happening, it's like, it's a song that you'd want to put onto a CD. This was like, uh, yeah, it was like one line of a song and then the next one would be a, a one line of a different song. Like the response would be like, it was just insane. Their logic to not really having just regular dialogue on the show was they didn't want it to be jolting for the audience when they started singing. It's way more jolting when you never stop singing. <laughs> There's oh. no break. So it sounds like one eternal long mix of something. And it makes it it makes them sound like they're not good singers, right? Like I couldn't tell who was actually a good singer until they would actually start to sing full songs, and then, and if like you said, it felt like some of the people were never going to get that chance. <laughs> and it, this is a good time to start talking about the fact that everyone in this whole production is wildly overqualified. Um, it stars. Um, Melora Hardin, who is Jan from The Office, who can, mm -hmm. seems to sing fine. Like she's taken singing she lessons. She sings on definitely. The Office too. 
That's right. And she, she sings on Office too, and it's and it's funny, but also like you could tell that she's hamming it up, but that she could really sing. Right. Uh, Carmen Lundy, who's a very lauded jazz singer. You have uh, Terrence Mann, who is in the original cast of Cats and Les Miserables and Beauty and the Beast. Uh, Save Young Glover. Critters, right? Critters, too, And Critters, right? right? <laughs> uh, a teen Save Young Glover, who's like a Broadway tap legend. And, um, of course, Allison Mack, pre her Nexium Sex Club <laughs> cult days <laughs> yeah. as an eight-year-old. Yeah. Um, and it's directed by Nick Castle, who plays Michael Myers in the first Halloween, but then he became a, a John Carpenter kind of duo director with him. He directed Last Starfighter. And Mark Muller uh, did the songwriting, who has, I'm looking it up right now, he has three Billboard Top 100 singles, one adult contemporary hit. And the most important thing to the internet is, of course, he wrote the theme to DuckTales. So it's not like the guy can't... Oh, wait, wait, oh. What? Okay, who, who's okay? Who's who, which character is the guy who wrote the theme to Ducktales? He is not on the show. He co-directed this with oh, he's Nick just a, Castle. Okay, but he wrote all of. If the every music. song, if every song was like the theme to Ducktales, I would be one hundred percent all in on this. Well, sure. Instead, this is like Billy Joel the musical. Like every <laughs> song to me sounded like a Billy Joel like song that you would not include on his albums. Right. His language storytelling songs. Not We Didn't Start mm-hmm. the Fire. Except I guess they do kind of just <laughs> list things incessantly on some of these songs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the and guy- Allison Mack in this is terrifying. I think she's, oh. she feels like, it feels like they dropped the poltergeist girl in the middle of this thing. <laughs> It is the dark side of child actors. I think there's a, well, there's a very small sliver of a crescent moon of a light side of child actors, but she is the black hole where it's an eight year old doing dialogue. Like she is 32 acting like no child would, but also being so terrifyingly on and on her mark in a way that (laughs) is like, Oh, you'll be a great cult member someday because you are great at following (laughs) orders without question. (laughs) what do you think about the, um, so, now, what is the name of the person in a Broadway play or in a play where they are like, um, I don't know if they're the narrator or if like, what, what is that kind of like? Like, like a Greek uh, chorus kind of thing? Yes, yes. Greek chorus is I'm trying to think. Were, were they, is that what the rappers were supposed to be? Yeah. I could not so, understand what was being said. And I'm a rap for a fan. <laughs> And I pride myself on understanding rap lyrics. Right, you're a rapster. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a rapping guy. It was the third time watching this I could pick up on some of what they were saying because they're okay. they're having to yell over the beats so much. I think is why yeah. it's very hard to tell what they're saying. Let's kind of um, oh, and the guy who uh, choreographed Dream Girls uh, did all the choreography. <laughs> For this. Okay. And the guy who did well, the, the art direction the, at Pee Wee's Playhouse built the sets. Like, this is. Yes, that. No wonder it's expensive. That is the best part. That's the best part by far is the set design. It looks amazing. Yeah. And apparently. And, and what? Yes. I was just saying, what, what? They take pride in the fact that this is based in a plaza. Mm. Like it says in the, in the opening theme, like, this is no mall. Like, like, don't get it wrong. This isn't a mall. This is a plaza. What? Why not a mall? Why, why was this not a mall? Why? What is so great about this plaza? Right. It's one of those little tiny, and I guess this is a very common thing for California, is a corner plaza. It's just a little L-shaped yeah. strip of stores. Um, and I guess there's a nail salon, a video store, a mm-hmm. car garage, a flower Which shop. There's also a yogurt Yes. A car garage and a yogurt shop together. And They're the same. A donut shop. And all we see yes. is the car garage and the donut shop. Um, and the and the front of the video store. Yeah, we see the front, but there's we don't go into anything else. I was thinking about wow, why? I'm assuming there would I'm assuming there would be huge there would be huge storylines involving the video store in right. future episodes. There are two characters pre- uh, who we see yeah. in the opening credits who I guess got cut for time 
there's a woman with long hair who sings Shangri-La and a surfer dude. And they said it was cut for time. But I'm going, how? Was this originally an hour (laughs) long? How can you cut? Like, you don't. If you're a pro at doing this, you're not like, oh, whoops, we accidentally made a 50 minutes of uh, show. We have to cut 20 out. So I, was, I don't know now, how they did that. I think in the back, I think in the background, you could see there was a surf and sail shop or something was what it was called. Okay. I think so. Obviously, he would have been the surf, the surf store, which you know makes sense for California too. Have there been any mall shows? I was thinking about this and like that seems like such a easy storyline. Like you have all these different stores and different places to go. I yeah. think because if you were shooting a audience style show, it's too many sets. Okay. You know what I mean? Cause there's only so much room on a sound stage, which is why you're almost always in somebody's living room. And then maybe there's also a bedroom set that you need to move into position. And now but, that we have all these, and now that we have all these shows that are single camera, right. Um, it, it's too late now. Cause there's no malls aren't a thing. Well, which is why stranger things hopped on it in the last season. Yeah. And it works in terms of a, a variety of places to look at. It's great. I love it. I mean, it's the perfect sitcom fodder. It is. They should have built the studios. Yeah. <laughs> Wasted all their money on this freaking plaza. So, by the way, that the, if if you watch the link on YouTube, the I guess it's the only way to watch it. It does open with the CBS special presentation, which is the inspiration for our logo and for our theme song. Yeah. They ripped off our logo. Yeah. In the past. Totally. (laughs) So the show opens on a credit sequence that defines kooky kid show. Like this looks like a off brand shake, rattle and roll style CBS kids program where there is stop animation donuts rolling around and people's heads are flying off their bodies <laughs> uh and you're being it, it i it sets it up like it's going to be a child's program and then in the next scene you have two mechanics throwing a woman's bra around and talking about how they score how he scored last night so the tone is very <laughs> strange from the jump yeah, I think the – you're totally right because I was – gosh, and can, can we talk about how bad the theme song is? Yeah, go for it. Now, you are you do music. It's – You, uh, you know wait, more about no. music composition yeah. than I do. <laughs> yes. And I was trying to pin down uh, no. what is this style of music, and the only thing I can think of, and this is extremely specific, I really think the keyboard that is used to play all the music is the same keyboard that's used to score Killer Clowns from Outer Space – which has a very specific sounding score. Um, Yeah. (laughs) But it also is a score that sounds just over a keyboard that you would buy for your teen. It's not totally pro sounding. I'm sure at the time it Uh, was. Yeah. And it's just people kind of like saying random words that rhyme, you know. You're talking about the theme song? Yeah, just the lyrics are just, you know, it's kooky. It's fun. It's not a mall. It's a plaza and it's paradise. <laughs> like that that's like the, that's I just did the theme song. Yeah. And a woman we never see again uh singing Shangri-La again and again. Yeah, and uh, by the way, the the Carmen Carmen is the best on the show, right? Carmen Lundy. In terms of say? singing performance? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I thought I, I hated her songs, but but the they were the best songs. I mean the donut, she you know, she does a donut making song. Yeah. Um well, she's hey, a very bad worker. Let's not uh <laughs> let's not get ahead of ourselves. Because first yeah, that's true. <laughs> we have to meet uh two oh boy, hold on. Let me pull up the IMDB. I don't want to mess up their character names and get everybody mad at me. Ira and George, the Bondo brothers working at yeah, the, car, the Bondo bros. car garage, the hot pink car garage. Nathan, these two guys, they might be brothers. 
They couldn't be any more different. Because Terrence Mann, (laughs) he wants to sleep with ladies. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But Jeff Yeager, the other actor, the other uh, tepid glass of water (laughs) brother, (laughs) he wants to fall in love. Mm -hmm. It's a it's an age old story. I hope nothing gets between them. (sighs) I, you know, I think from this point in the story, you can safely say that nothing will get between them. Also, is 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 the brother who wants to fall in love from California and the horny brother from the Bronx? Why do they have vastly <laughs> different regional accents? He's like, oh, that is come true. I on, guess- brother, you gotta get with a lady. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think he. I think when you're a lazy worker. It you, it reflects in your accent. It you, New Yorkifies you. Yeah. Come on, you yeah, gotta it, smell the roses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they. Yeah, so they, they they work in this auto thing, and 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 it, it's it's not alluded to at all in the show, except there's signs everywhere that says that yes, we have yogurt. I think that's supposed to be a California joke because in 1990, it was like frozen yogurt. Okay. (laughs) Fruits and nuts over there. (laughs) That was cut dialogue from Ira. (laughs) Oh, brother. (laughs) Give me a real slice of pie any day. And and do they ever finish a car? Uh, No, the horny brother takes the car out on a date. So he can. That's right. So why did they have to fix the car if he was able? He said, "I thought you were going to stay here and fix the manifold." Yeah, I don't know. Can you drive a car if the manifold's broken? Oh, Nathan, great question. Uh, Barely. If that (laughs) manifold isn't working right, forget it. I mean, and would you take a woman on a date with a broken manifold? That's not classy. Yeah. Well, it's like Ira says: Mercedes and ladies rhyme for a reason. Imagine that, that being was a line. <laughs> Tony Award nominated, <laughs> Terrence Mann Broadway star, and you're looking at your script. Mercedes and ladies don't rhyme for no reason. Okay, I'll memorize this. <laughs> <laughs> this, <laughs> you know what though that that really gives him a lot of direction. Sure. Uh, let's see. So they're working on a car and. Uh, is Savion Glover and his two rap and unnamed buddies, are they supposed to be uh, valet parkers? I, I think so, because I see them, run, like you can see them in the background and then and initially they're running to the cars. Um, it was, excuse me. <laughs> it was. He, um, Nathan's crying. It was either, <laughs> it was either they were bums who were trying to wipe people's <laughs> cars down or they were valet. <laughs> You know, like, that's what it felt like. And I'm pretty sure they were valet. I think they were valet. Um, And one of the valets is uh, Savion Glover, who is a a tap dancing legend, another Broadway performer, who is on crutches in this show. And -hmm. when I was watching, I was going, I bet he broke his leg for real because the choice to put him on crutches is too interesting. (laughs) And it's true. Well, but, but later he did. It is true. He broke his foot a week before the show started. So the choreographer figured out crutch choreography to give him. And it looks good. Because he's he's on his feet he's, in the in the curtain call. I think that curtain call was um, probably shot early because that had all the cast okay. members, including the people we didn't see. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that well he but he had the crutches though. Like he hops off of the crutches onto his feet okay. and then he's back up on. So maybe, I mean, he, maybe, maybe he does it in a way he's, he's able to. Yeah. He could just be like transferring weight. I mean, it was cool. Like I thought like that was, that was my favorite part was that I thought they did. They were fun dancers. I liked the dancing and I liked him being on the crutches to like, you know, I liked him flip. I, I watched a break dance video one time where this, Guy was on crutches and he was doing all this cool stuff. And it made me think of that. Good dancing. It's like you can't really screw up good dancing unless you don't film their feet or something. Right. 
<laughs> yeah. If, this seems like something the show would do is have a tap dancing thing and they would be all over the donut shop instead. But like, why didn't they give them a bigger <laughs> part in the show as opposed to these two seconds? No, I'm saying like, it seems like this show is, it had such a bad, like, uh, the show was so bad that I feel like they would have a tap dancing scene, but you'd see donuts dancing instead. Yes. Right. For how kooky the opening <laughs> is. I mean. Yes. There's no animation later on. Um, so we're kind of introduced to them. Uh, then Melora Harden and Allison Mack, her daughter, come on the scene. Melora Harden, one of TV's worst haircuts in this show. Oh, my God. Such a beautiful woman. And they basically shave all her hair off in a way that I guess was like part of remember Northern exposure, the show Northern mm-hmm. exposure. And I think it was a big deal that the lead actress had a very, very short haircut. And that led to a spate of okay. short haircuts on everybody on television. And I think she was po- possibly yeah. victim to that. Yeah. It, it, it kind of looks like, um, it looks like a crew cut. It's not synth. It's, it's not, yeah, not Cynthia Rothrock because her hair was down. It looks like some uh, th- there's a woman uh, like action star from that time period. I think that had like a Dolph Lundgren type of hair, or maybe I'm just thinking of Dolph Lundgren and, and putting a woman's face on him. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just that, yeah, it's a super short like, and then like a like a a a, a woman's version of a of a flat top like you said yeah a box top yeah it looks like she got like a the wax stick out and did like a little almost like a pompadour yeah <laughs> yeah it's like kind of, kind of like gumby <clears throat> uh apparently her husband had her ex-husband who is now dead bought this donut store and ran it into the ground and now she has to take it over but she's going to sell it off um right she thinks that she doesn't know that he's ran into the ground and so she's thinking she'll just sell it and then uh move with the money move to paris and uh, become a famous chef right right um and we are then introduced to carmen lundy um Mm -hmm. so the only black characters we have on the show (laughs) save glover and his friends uh, yell rap about what all the white people are doing. They kind of explain <laughs> yeah. again what you just saw. And then Carmen yep. Lundy is a, uh, a lazy, horrible waiter <laughs> <laughs> who is the one employee of this donut shop. She slops coffee all over the place. She makes donuts that have like hair stuck in them. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I think like, cause I, I was, thinking about it like well, this is a really diverse cast like even like the extras like they were using different people from different groups yeah uh, but it's like every time i want to compliment someone an older show for being diverse it's always done <laughs> like you're mentioning yeah they're never just a human being <laughs> or a lead <laughs> right <laughs> uh yeah. and she's a great she is a great singer and she has a lot of presence i guess she had never acted before this she does a really good job okay um, yeah. and yeah, she sings one of the two legit songs in the show, which is the, the donut hole song about how you make the but donuts. Also, yes. That. And then also the song at the end about like, ain't it well, always hey, that way? Don't, don't, uh, <laughs> don't get it. <laughs> so we she have sings two. I just want so to clear, much more. <laughs> I just want to clear the air here. Sure. Uh, <laughs> not a good song. This donut hole song. It's really Sesame streety. Possibly because no, it's being as sung bad with a as, obnoxious child. Yeah, it's as bad as the donuts they're making. Ooh. Nathan. And the, and the, the yeah, the hair thing is, disg- I mean, it's freaking Jeremy, we, we might want to cut that. It was a little hot. <laughs> <laughs> Already noted. <laughs> hold, on, stay, hold on. What now? What, what happened? That joke was a little, a little harsh. What did I say? I mean, it was I said the, the donuts? I said the song. Yeah, I said the song is as bad is as the, the donuts, donuts they are making. I, Jeremy, you might want to cut that again. Uh, <laughs> it's a little hot. I actually, I think it might be a great song, uh, but it's about donuts, so that might be the problem. <laughs> they they 
like I said, the girl is like poltergeist. So like the little girl. So like now when you say that, she's doing what do you mean by that? When you say poltergeist, what's what's are you like her energy or her look? What do you mean by that? Her first of all, her look definitely. You know, a long a girl, a small girl, a long blonde hair, and her facial expressions. And it always feels like she's going to announce that they're here <laughs> to me. She and then and, and even I feel like. I feel like they even nod to it because she goes to the video store and she's standing in front of all these horror movie posters. Well, you know why that is. She's looking at a Halloween movie poster from the movie Halloween. Yes. And Nick Castle, the director, played oh. Michael Myers. Yes. That's him being cute. Of course, yes. yes. <laughs> but it's it's I don't know. I and the you know, when she, they show her pouring coffee and she's like just like splashing the coffee over everyone. <laughs> like it, it, it's supposed to be funny, but it's like, it's just, it's just madness. Like there's, it's not, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not invested yet. So like I see this and I'm like, this sucks. I hate this. The, <laughs> the show, it isn't quite cartoony over the top enough. And then sometimes it is. Uh, and, and you have yeah. to be all one or all the other. Cause it doesn't uh, mix very well. If you, if you put the both together, I, I wish they would have, taken more from the peewee's playhouse feel you know i feel like i feel like this would work as a spinoff or something from peewee if they would have like you know figured out a way to do this instead of it just being like oh there's it looks like people are doing a, a different show on the peewee set and they forgot to bring the peewee stuff so you want everyone to be like more like almost more music video y looking where the costumes are more extreme and everyone's acting a little more unnaturally. Yeah, well, I would definitely prefer that these like like I like I said, I don't love musicals, but I am okay with there being dialogue and then a cool song starts, you know? And so this having so much like like I just kept feeling like a song was about to start and I was getting ready to see if I liked the song. And then, no, it was just a line. And, yeah. and that's what was happening the entire time. And then they would finally do a song, but the visuals were so disgusting that I couldn't enjoy the song. <laughs> the, the choreography you know. for the donut song is the cringiest part because you're watching adults who, you know, are working for scale in an afternoon hold up donuts and like spin around on stools and go donuts. And it's watching <laughs> elderly people do that who have, you know, maybe fought in a war is depressing to me. <laughs> this is what my life is amounted to. <laughs> I freed, I freed the Germans. I was trying to think of, okay, what's the plot after this? They're really isn't besides the two brothers both fall in love with the donut shop owner and that's it did you like the part where uh the rapping valets walk up to allison mack and they go oh she's got attitude and then it's just them going attitude i just i just kept thinking are they gonna fight this girl yes why are they so mad at this child I mean, how do you yeah, express and, attitude? <laughs> <laughs> and I just, like, I just, I couldn't, I hated that. I hated that scene so much mm -hmm. it, because it reminded me of the rapping in uh, the witch movie. Um, <laughs> the witch? Uh, the, the New when those New England settlers have that black <laughs> goat no. and the goat starts rapping? So, uh, <laughs> no, not the witch. <laughs> the movie um, with uh, the the girl oh, with the red hair. Are you talking top <laughs> that? Yes, it's, it reminded me of top that. It reminded me of that kind of like yes. super cringy rap. And uh, what is that freaking movie called? Teen Witch. Teen Witch. Jeez, I had one word right. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, it just reminded me of that. And that stuff like. It's funny, but at, like I said, I'm too close to it. I like rap music, so it's always so much worse. Oh, I um, no, no, no. I agree. It's it's always terrible when they would attempt to do rap on uh, network shows 
in the nineties. Uh, and yeah. And then the girl, the, her response was, uh, I forget what she says at the end, you know, like, yes, it's true. I'm a, got attitude. I don't know what she says, but it's so stupid. And it's like, I hate this girl. I hate these raps. And I really just want to go into the video store. I just want to walk, go into the video store and look at VHS tapes during this. <laughs> this, this I don't disagree. This, I, I was like, <laughs> I've like, I've lost, I've, they lost me at every step of the way. I think the last song was the most interesting. So it's the only so they, good so they, song. I think yeah, it's an actually so they, they a point. good song. Ain't that always the way yeah, where they're all I, regretting their life decisions. Yeah. And I, I just, you know, like the, the, the guys see the girl, the, the, the mother, Jan, uh, Jan from the office, <laughs> her name, Lauren, mm-hmm. Lauren. And, um, they both, fall, like we said, we, they both fall in love and they're trying to, you know, uh, get a date with her. And then she, she gives up. She, she, she realizes that she's just going to have to run this donut shop. And then, uh, Carmen leaves and she thinks she's being fired. And so she starts singing this song. Everyone kind of sings this song like, you know, ain't it always the way y- you want things to happen, but they're not happening this way. So it's like this. And that song is like reflective and, and it's a good song. Like I said, it, it, yeah. it's like a, it's a kind what, of a good Billy Joel song. It's what, <laughs> like, but, but it's also like every good musical and every, I know Disney musicals talk about like, you always have to have the aspirational song, the I want song. This is the big I want song where everyone talks about their dreams. And I think part of the reason it's good is because you're actually figuring out uh, who these characters are as opposed to them just Mm -hmm. going donuts, do, do, donuts. (laughs) They're talking about something (laughs) in interiority. Uh, But the reason that she has to keep the donut shop, we didn't say is, um, the bank comes and says, oh, your, your husband mismanaged this place and you only yeah. have a tiny amount of money. And then her landlord takes the money. I didn't mention the landlord who has two lines is Chris Sarandon, Tony Ward nominated <laughs> actor who has been in Fright Night, Princess Bride, Child's Play. Like he's the lead of all those movies. And he has two mm-hmm. lines in this show, which is, uh, muchas gracias, the rent. Why did you get Chris Sarandon to do that? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what, what what was he? So so obviously, they drop these people in because in the future these people will have big roles. I, I guess so. I guess that was the plan. Obviously, sure. But but then but if you are now treating this as no longer a pilot and it's a TV special, then get all of that freaking footage. Get all the cut footage. <laughs> right. Put it back in. Sure. Just make it an hour. Make just it an do hour. the thing. It's like, hey, tonight, a special musical. <clears throat> like, you don't have to show it as you would have aired it. <laughs> I I read that when they play this for executives, they were so excited, possibly because it was so different. And they were just like, okay, this is like nothing else. It has stars in it. Home run. And then they played it for test audiences and it got like an F. Everyone hated it. (laughs) So I think that they were so scared of this being toxic. And this is when ratings actually mattered on TV Mm -hmm. that they maybe only trusted they could dump this turkey for half an hour because they had spent so much money on building a fake mini mall for it. (laughs) <laughs> they spent too much was, money on was, uh, giant plaster rotating donuts. Oh my gosh. When you, when they pull in or like when they pull, when you see the wide shot of the entire place, yeah. is, is that really as big as it is? It was a real mini mall. And one of the reasons it cost so much yeah. is they went in and they put a facade on everything. That is, yes. it's, so it's it just, a real size mini mall with like, we, we were saying like a giant, fake donut shop with spinning donuts and a fake car garage and a bunch of like fake palm trees. And there's a article from 1990 in the uh, Los Angeles uh, times talking about how people thought it was a real mini mall. They would pull up trying to shop there. And also the residents hated it because it was so bright (laughs) and garish. And they were writing uh, their council people saying, this is too much. We hate this. So they tore it down immediately oh after the show finished uh, shooting. 
I would have freaking loved a place like that. Now it would be a tourist attraction, sure. I don't know why people don't. I mean, I don't know. Like they built that mall for Stranger Things, and then, or they didn't build the mall; they just used an old. They rehabbed mall, it, yeah. you know. And you could go to it and see all those old things. I'm like, why? And everyone's rushing out to these places. Why don't places do that kind of thing more often? Like sometimes you'll see the Doritos bag. Like, oh, it's the old Doritos bag is back, you know, or right. the old Bud Light, you know, whatever. Like, I guess, I guess, I guess, making something permanent is a little bit, um, you know, you, you know, like uh, two years from now it's going to be old hat. And now you have this thing that looks like an old eighties mall or something. So I, I guess I get it, but I bet it's now just fun. you could restart a mall, get an old mall and make stores. It would have to be in a very prominent location, but like have stores invest and say, this is going to be your throwback storefront, have all your product that you have online, but put the old logo up. If you did that, people would go to it. And go out of their way, I, I think, think so, to yeah. shop there. But only now. This, like it, We're just at that point where people have that level of nostalgia for it. It's like the on Back to the Future uh, 2 with the 80s yes. cafe. Yes. You know, like, I don't see why we couldn't... I don't see why more more brands aren't doing stuff like this. I guess they're just doing their, like, you know their one-offs online or whatever, but it is funny when you see the scene where Marty is looking at the vintage store with all of the contemporary items in it. And that is literally mm. what vintage stores are full of now. I remember <laughs> yeah. seeing that as a kid and being like, Oh yeah, when I'm old, this is what it's going to look like. And it sure came true. <laughs> now there's Roger rabbit dolls yep. for a hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. I, I I think this um, I don't know I, I mean I, I don't know how much more we could say about this, but your your review like you 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 don't think this was as bad as some of the other stuff we've watched. Well, I don't want to leave anyone hanging. Hopefully, people watch these things before we talk about them, and they're not just experiencing yes. it through our <laughs> haphazard <laughs> description. <laughs> but I don't want to leave out the fact that there's a happy ending. In that, uh, Allison Mack excitedly runs outside and tells the auto mechanics oh, yeah. and everyone, we're staying. Don't worry, everyone. My mother's <laughs> dream has been shattered, and she now has a dead-end <laughs> store that she is deeply in debt to. And that's our happy ending. Um, that's right. And now the two brothers can- We're staying! Com- <laughs> the two brothers can compete to uh, have sex with Jan from the office. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. One of you will get to. <laughs> We're staying. <laughs> yeah, and then and then we should mention, like we said, there was at the end of the show during the credits. There's a curtain call where they put. I don't. It looked like a, a kind of like a digital curtain around the set, yes. and they have everyone come out and bow. Uh, which again, I'm like, come on, like, like it's cute, I guess. But is that what's going to happen in every episode? Like. Like, this is like, like, we don't have to keep pointing out that this is a musical. <laughs> Nick. Like, it's like people aren't going to be confused. Nick Castle and Mark Miller said they loved old musical. They called themselves, what was it, like the Schmaltz Brothers or something like that? Or the, the Kitsch Guys or whatever, because they loved old musicals. And I guess Nick's, Nick Castle's dad was a choreographer for old Hollywood musicals. Um, And they claim... The reason why they didn't work is it was just too old fashioned and now Glee is a big hit and they were just ahead of their time. And again, no, Glee is doing songs people like. Don't don't try to say you were ahead of your time with everything that doesn't work. Do I think that this is better? I, I guess this is so curious to me and there's obviously so much hard work put into this in a way that something like a Saturday morning preview special doesn't have, which is the epitome of, of laziness. And you just like, you can sense a writer dashing it off in an afternoon. I guess this is such a odd labor of love that it is more fascinating to me. And I would rather rewatch this than, than some of the other stuff that we've seen. Okay. 
I, I buy that. <laughs> I think I have to rewatch it. I think Mer- I think Meredith wants to watch it. My wife. So what a treat! I will probably have to. Sit, yeah, for her Mother's Day treat. <laughs> yeah, baby, my, my review is baby. I have watch, a seat. <laughs> I, <laughs> I would I would watch Bad Ronald a hundred times more than watch this again. Wow! So you would rather watch a teen creep <laughs> jerk off inside a wall? <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay. This is a family show, <laughs> right? I don't know. Uh, no, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I like the aesthetic of that better than this. I, I just, like I said, I'm biased against musicals, probably. So if if the songs aren't good, then I am not. But then that means and, you and re- you dislike bad musicals. Then you're saying I like musicals if I course, like the songs. But even, but even stuff like Dream Girls, where the music is good, it, it's just it's jarring to watch something where someone is just talking normally, and then they're not. They're singing, and it immediately, yeah. like, I'll be like, I'll be watching, and I'm like, oh, this, I, I'm interested in this, and then they start singing, and I'm like, I am now out of this world. Like, I am not part of this world anymore, and I'm just watching people sing a song. Um, it, it just it. It takes me out of it. Like okay. it takes me out of it is all I'm trying to say. All right. <laughs> Maybe I don't know how to watch a musical. Maybe that's my problem. I just don't know how to how to do it. Like I liked like Moulin Rouge and stuff, but I also liked it's like you said, like I liked the songs that they were doing because I liked the original songs. And also do you think that Moulin Rouge is such a like you were saying, you wanted everything in this world to be more heightened and Moulin Rouge is such a artificial world. Does that have anything to do with yeah. it? Yeah. Like it is, it, yeah, maybe, is yeah, maybe that's a cartoon it. world. Yeah, m- maybe that's it. Where I'm like, I don't want to be in a real world, and then someone breaks out in song. Right. S- like I'd it. rather you hate be it when I in, do it. It's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> we have edited so many of these podcasts. Um, what do you I, mean? <laughs> <laughs> what oh, do gosh. you mean I, I, when you talk like that? <laughs> I appreciate that you pulled back from the mic, though. You understand. I know good technique. Dynamics. <laughs> I mean, I guess Willy Wonka is a musical, right? Yeah, it's a musical. Okay, so yes, but a high percentage of the movie is also the dialogue and talking. That is usually a musical. So like, yes. Otherwise, it's well, an if opera. There's a, <laughs> so either I want more dialogue mm. cut to song, or I want all singing, but not the way, I don't want the way this was done where, Talk where singing. there was not, there was only, there, yeah, there was no songs. Like right. it was just the, the two songs and then the rest of it was like you just did. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, it was. Fair enough. Yeah. So, so <laughs> there's my review. Okay. Uh, Broadway, take notes. <laughs> I give this review, I give the show two dream girls. <laughs> <laughs> out of five out of five two dream girls out of five chicago's i i will say that this thing is is not maybe legitimately uh good but i do think that people would watch it and be entertained like in a in a fascinated way yeah i wonder why the reviews were so low do you think they all felt the same way we did? Like they would want to watch a show like this, but not in this format. <laughs> Why audiences didn't like it at the time? Yeah. Uh, I could only find two reviews of when this show came out and it was both just them saying, Oh, uh, I wanted to like this, but it just doesn't gel. And you don't connect. So, to yeah, anybody, I guess they all have the which same is thing. true. Yeah. It just doesn't yeah. quite work. Uh, but I wonder why the test audiences too, like if it's getting F's, like how many people watch this thing? How test, many people are in a test audience? A lot. Of, so here's something that I heard, and I hear this about a lot of musicals. There's a surprising amount of movies that were shot as musicals, and then they test so badly they cut all the musical numbers out <laughs> because wow. test audiences don't know what movie they're seeing. They are told right. something like, oh, do you want to watch a movie with Brad Pitt? And they go, yeah. And then they go in and they show them whatever. It's like I remember um, Seven got 
terrible audience ratings whenever it was first previewed because the way that they asked people if they wanted to watch the movie was, do you want to watch a movie with Morgan Freeman from Driving Miss Daisy and Brad Pitt from <laughs> Legends of the Fall? <laughs> and then they show them a horrific movie about a serial killer <laughs> with a depressing <laughs> ending. So yes, people who say, right. do you like Driving Miss Daisy? Yes, great. You're going to love Seven. And so they gave it a terrible <laughs> score. I think a lot of audiences, if they watch a movie and then it's suddenly a musical, and like you said, if you're not used to watching a musical or if you're not prepped, it's going to be a musical, is so off-putting to people, they will give it a terrible score. I know when Sweeney Todd came out, they didn't show in previews that it was a musical. And then on opening night, when they started singing, people started yelling and walking out of the theater because <laughs> they were for just could them. not for them. <laughs> could not contend with the fact that there was going to be singing in this opera. <laughs> yeah, I did. I've done. I've been in a test audience a few times for TV shows. Yeah, and um, it's funny they give you a they give you two buzzers in your hand like a Scientology test, right. and uh, on one of them is if you like something, hit the button. Yeah. And then if you don't like something, hit the other button. And that goes to a current that it's, is hooked up to the producer's nuts, right? It shocks the, the TV yeah, producer's yeah. nuts. Yeah. You, uh, I always and the wondered other one gives him a donut. Game sh- <laughs> is this yeah. on Nickelodeon? I always wondered why that game show had screaming <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> so, okay, so, so like, you have, you're going clear. You have two buttons. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, I, I did it a few times because at Universal Studios... Um, they have a test area where they test NBC shows and uh, in, 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 in Florida. And I'm a pass holder there. So I, I'm always trying to get in these. So I'm always lying about it's one brag where I'm after from. the other with this guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've been to yeah, a I test audience. Out. <laughs> I'm a pass holder. Yeah. Yeah. Um, excuse me. I, I'm a pass holder. I deserve this. <laughs> so, so, so. So yeah, it's funny. I'll have to go like, oh, I'm I'm from Ohio. You know, I live in Florida, but I'm from Ohio. They're like, because if I say I'm from Florida, they're like, oh, we already have enough people from Florida. So right. I say I'm from Ohio. And they said, do you have your license? And I go, oh, I don't. Oh, I, I it's in the car. <laughs> okay, right this way, sir. Um, wow, that's a tip. Flawless. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the shows are like. <laughs> I've done it three times, and I did uh, an episode of a spinoff of Blacklist. Okay, uh, with James Spader, it was the worst experience of my life. This this show, <laughs> and I've experienced death. Yeah, right. <laughs> I've had people die in my life, and this was worse. <laughs> <laughs> and then I did like a, a some game show, uh, which was bad. And then I also did uh, episodes of Superstore mm. uh, before that came out, and that that was a great experience. I, I, uh, that show is funny, and and so I was like alternating between the buttons and on the on the. Uh, I, I know I had to war have to have worn out the button on the uh, the other shows that I hated because I was just like jamming. I'm like, can, I'm like, can, they, you, if you if you they say when would you have turned the show off? And you hit a space, the space bar. And I'm like, I'm like, can I turn it off now? Can I leave now? And they won't. They make you sit through this entire show um, if you want your if you want your universal bucks. So, yeah. What do you get paid for doing that? Do you get a gift card? You get like $20, $25 and you can spend it on food and stuff. That's true of any money. Yeah, it's true. You can uh, spend but only it on universal you want. food. Oh, okay. <laughs> only uni- Yeah, it's a it's only, a gift card. Only to Shrek nuggets. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and those are the best nugs. <laughs> <laughs> did you? Did I send that to you? The kid cuisine uh, with the Shrek uh, shaped fun nuggets. Yes, you did. Yeah, swamp yes, pudding. You did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Sh- Shrek has such a. Uh, disgusting look i don't know why anything would want to be shaped in his form it is truly a hideous looking movie with a disgusting puke color palette <laughs> yeah but what a soundtrack all right well uh oh boy yeah uh boy boy howdy um so uh, to, for for more information on how to cheat the 
television testing system at Universal. Tune into our next episode. That's right. <laughs> Nathan's tips and tricks. <laughs> yeah. Um, so do we talk about... Um, let's, uh, let's wrap this up and then let's record a quick mini so that will introduce what we're going to talk about next week. Okay. Um, so clap. <laughs> here's, here's the end of this episode. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's my review. <laughs> <laughs> that was King of the Outros, Nathan Shear. <laughs> <laughs> bringing the plane down for a landing. Uh, Shangri-La Plaza, I say check it out if you like bizarre oddities and especially if you like to see the stars of the future in the past doing things they probably <laughs> yeah. wish weren't online. Yes. Um, and to see how you too could end up being in a sex cult. <laughs> yes, remember to... Put your children into show business sooner rather than later. Move to L.A., make them audition for everything, make them obey constantly. Mm -hmm. It'll all pay off. Um, yes. I'm going to end with a personal question for you, Nathan. If you could bring back one mall or plaza store, what would it be? Could be food court. Um, probably like uh, Al Aladdin's Lens castle, castle or something. Good choice. Yeah. Or, or, or hot dog on a stick. Although I think that is still around in some places. I, I, I was actually going to say hot dog on a stick. Maybe my number one choice. Mm -hmm. Something about it. With the little clown, the clown doing a constant. Oh, um, I forgot about that uh, enslaved clown they had constantly performing tricks mm -hmm. behind the counter. Yeah. God, good memories. The animatronic. The animatronic. Come on, let's be serious. All right. The, they, they're animatronic. <laughs> Yeah, so that's it. Well, thank you for talking to me for another week, Nathan. Don't yes. talk to me thank again you. until we meet next week. <laughs> and listeners, yes. we hope we will listen. <laughs> and listeners, we hope <laughs> you will join us again next time on Network Special. <laughs> and as always, I like you listening to this show. And thank you, Jeremy. No problem. Great. No, thanks. <laughs> Good out. Good out. Great out. <laughs>